Hey everybody, how's it going? It's been a while since I've done an actual woodworking video. I've been working on my timber frame house for the last several months, so I'm kind of excited to do a woodworking related video. And with the holidays right around the corner, I thought I would share 10 different gift ideas for the woodworker. So if you're watching this and you're shopping for someone who you know is a woodworker, some really good ideas. And if you are the woodworker, you could always send this video to somebody who might be shopping for you and say, hey, I'm kind of, into number one and three on this list. So check those out. So let's jump into it. All right, first up are these Japanese pole saws by Suzanne Japan, who's also sponsoring this video. They've been a longtime partner of mine and whether or not they sponsored this video, they definitely would have made this list because the tools are so well-made and they're so affordable that they're the perfect gift idea. All these are under $50. The Ryoba saw, which is two-sided, it has rip cut on one side, cross cut on the other, is only $40. And this is a great saw for larger tenons and joinery for furniture. I'm not talking like giant things for timber frames or anything like that, but your larger table size joinery and just breaking down material, rip, ripping boards and cross-cutting them to length, different things like that. This is kind of like the jack of all trades. You can also use it for really fine furniture, joinery as well, like dovetails and things like that. It's a, it's a great saw. It touches every single project that I build, hands down, and it's only like $40. Now, the finer versions of that are these two Dazuki saws. One is a cross-cut and one is a rip-cut. And I actually helped Suzanne develop this rip cut saw, which is a true dovetail saw. Now, if you go online, you'll see a lot of their saws labeled as dovetail, tenon, cross cut, rip cut, just kind of for search engine optimizations. And so people can kind of find their, their saws when they search different keywords. But this is truly their dovetail saw. They didn't have this in their lineup and I worked with them and kind of spec'd it out and they built it and it's amazing. <laughs> it's a really, really nice saw. So for finer furniture joinery, these two in combination are absolutely awesome. And I kind of recommend all three. So you can get everything done with a Ryoba and these two Dazuki saws. Then they have a finer Dazuki cross-cut version. These black-backed ones are their cross-cut ones. And this is like such a fine saw. It's really fun to use for anything and everything, a lot of that Kumiko stuff, which is really cool and popular. This, this is a great saw for that. And then lastly, I like this little flush cut saw. So I do a lot of joinery with pegged or drawboard mortise and tenons, and this little flush cut saw will cut those pegs flush perfectly or whatever kind of proud dovetails that you might need to trim flush. It's a great little saw too. So another nice thing about Suzanne is I know they're running 20% off on all their saws from November 20th to the 27th, kind of that Black Friday week. So uh, you can take advantage of even more savings on already really affordable tools, great stocking stuffers, and they're honestly, I mean, for fine professional woodworkers, they're great saws. And I think these two are about 45 each. Like I said, this one's only 40. They're just great value. They're made in Japan, which don't get that confused with made in China. They make really nice stuff over in Japan. Um, so. Suzanne Japan, first gift idea. It's a great gift. Moving on to number two. All right, next up on the list are these really cool, brand new to the market clamp stands that a friend of mine, Ryan at Felthaus Family Woodworks developed and created. And if you remember this really beautiful cutting board that I made, this was from a set of Ryan's plans. So he also makes really cool cutting board plans. But anyway, these are really clever and they're a great way to clamp glue ups in a much better way. Now these are designed to run in T-tracks on the bottom. A lot of people will have T-tracks in their workbench, but I just took a couple pieces of plywood and routed a T-track groove in it so it's a little more versatile. I can move it from place to place, set it on sawhorses or whatever. But this little T-track groove allows me to clamp these things down and I can space these out. So these are really neat. They work with both pipe clamps. You just position them on your T-track, screw them down so they don't go nowhere. So pipe clamps, but they also work with these parallel jaw clamps as well. 
and just give you a more stable base when you're clamping and it gives you a lot more room underneath. So if you're adding calls, which are boards that run kind of across your glue up that you clamp on each side to keep the top or whatever you're gluing nice and flat, that gives you a lot more room underneath now that these are off the table a little bit. They also are more stable base than like tr your traditional pipe clamps that might want to roll over if you need to slide things. So if you have your boards on here, you're trying to slide them, everything's going to stay nice and solid and not just roll all over on you. So it's a really awesome idea. And another cool thing about this is if you're maybe doing some epoxy work on your glue up and you want a really nice level surface, you can put your level on here and you can also slide these up and down to level out your surface perfectly. So they're just a really, really awesome idea. He has these over on his Etsy page. And just so you know, I should have mentioned this up front, all the links to all these different products will be down in the description. All right, so number three on the list are these really cool wooden hand plane kits from Lee Valley or Veritas. And these kits include the metal hardware to make these planes. They don't include the wood, you choose your own wood and you can shape it however you want. They come in a couple different sizes. You have some smaller sizes to make kind of a block plane size. And then you have some larger ones for kind of your smoothing and jack plane size planes. You can choose a variety of different woods. I went with marble wood and Jara on this one for kind of my jack plane. And I went with just Jara on this little kind of block plane mini smoother. And you can also choose whatever metal you want for your blade iron. I think A202 and PMV11, which is a proprietary metal that Veritas carries, and I really like the PMV11. And they have a Norse style plane adjustment to retract or advance the plane iron or adjust your lateral adjustments. So it's a really nice little kit. They're a lot of fun. You'll essentially take three slices of wood, cut out a section of the middle, glue those all together to create your throat opening rather than trying to chop that out of a solid block. It makes it really, really easy. Just a really fun project and something that after you build it, which is fun itself, you always get to use it on whatever project. I actually have YouTube videos on both of these, so you can always check those out and see how I made them. Yeah, these wooden plane kits from Veritas, number three. <laughs> All right, so number four on the list, not necessarily a woodworking tool, but the Leatherman. It's something that I carry with me every single day I have for probably four or five years now. And I can't, when I don't have this on me, I feel completely naked. I use it all the time for everything from, you know, plane adjustments to tightening a cabinet door to you, you name it. I use it all the time and I've beat this thing up really bad. I abuse it. It's super, super strong and durable. I can't recommend these enough. And I actually give these out as gifts quite a bit to friends and family who have helped me out with different things. And I'm like, listen, just make sure, just wear it for two weeks. And after two weeks of getting used to having it on you, you'll be shocked at how much you use it and you won't not ever use it again. I have the Leatherman Wave Plus that I've used. I have two of these and there's a new one that I've seen out recently called the Leatherman Arc, I believe. So I'm, I'm kind of interested in maybe trying that out. I actually need to make a new leather holster because I've worn mine completely through. And so I'm thinking about maybe trying that Leatherman Arc, but these are awesome tools. They're great for your everyday carry. It's not just woodworking related. You'll use it around the house all the time. I promise you get this and wear it for two weeks, get used to using it and you'll thank me. All right, so number five on the list is this really cool little spoon carving jackknife by FlexCut. Now I have the original one and I actually won this at my local Woodworking Guild Christmas party many years ago, but they've improved it since 
and now it's like the 2.0 version and it has an extra tool. Uh, this one has a straight blade knife on it and it has two curved knives, kind of gouges or scorps type things for hollowing out the inside of a spoon. So there's this one like this, kind of a more of a shallow curve. And then there is the more aggressive curve for getting a little bit deeper in the spoon. And I really like this thing. I take it on my camp trips with my family. And when we're sitting around the fire at night or during the uh, day, hanging out, I bring a couple like maple or cherry or olive wood blanks with me, or I'll just take my hatchet and rough out a piece of firewood and just carve something. And instead of having my phone in my hand and scrolling, I have this in my hand and I'm kind of, I can stay in the conversation with people more, talk to the family rather than getting distracted with the phone. So this is a really fun little gift that's fun to take on vacations, or you can just be in your wood shop carving things too. So the flex cut pocket spoon jack. <laughs> Really good little gift, that's number five. All right, for number six, I'm kind of cheating and including several different tools here, but I'm calling this layout tool upgrades or just additions if the woodworker in your life doesn't have these. We'll start with this guy right here, and this is a marking gauge. For fine woodworking and joinery layout, you really wanna mark everything with a knife line and not a pencil line. And these marking gauges, use this piece here to reference the edge of a board. And these rods with these cutting blades, single bevel cutting blades at the end, will allow you to mark like a tenon wall or a shoulder wall, perfectly parallel to whatever reference surface, the edge of your board or whatever, to get a nice, crisp, straight, perfectly parallel line. These are super, super important for good joinery layout. And this is a double marking gauge and if you look it has two different blades one blade that will have an inside bevel and one blade that will have an outside bevel so what you can actually do is lay these out to create both sides of your mortise wall at the same time really nice tool to have if you don't have one already similar to a marking gauge for really important layout is a really good square a lot of people have squares out there, combination square is what I prefer because it's just so versatile. I'm a big fan of spending the extra money for Starrett. There's a lot of different brands out there that you can get your big box stores. Which are probably fine tools, but they're not lifelong heirloom tools like Starrett. They have hardened steel matte blades that come out really easily, and you can use this independently of the square body. And these are made of a really nice cast iron this goes right back in there like that, and they maintain their squareness very, very well. And you can actually adjust squareness. There's a couple little pads inside of these that it references. So if these ever go out of square, then you can bring them back true. A high quality one like this is not gonna go out of square hardly ever, if ever. Those cheaper ones do go out of square a heck of a lot more. So a six inch one is, is kind of my favorite but I've been using this 12 inch one all the time in my timber framing and I use it all the time in woodworking too. So you, it's kind of nice to have two of them. This 12 inch one's a little bit cumbersome to, to use when you don't have to. This little six inch one's just the sweet spot. And then to use these, you wanna mark your lines, all your joinery out with either this marking gauge or a high quality marking knife. I really like this feel, uh, which is a Swiss made one. They make a lot of the gouges and they make chisels but they make tons of carving gouges. And I like this kind of wide double bevel marking gauge. That allows me to whatever side that I need my bevel edge to be, I can switch it if I need it to be this side, I can roll it over, I can switch it to that side. Pretty easy to keep nice and sharp. I've had this thing for a long time. It's cut a lot of lines and I'm a pretty big fan of it. All right, so number seven are these Sony WH-1000 MX4 headphones. Now, I've had these for like five years now, and I beat the living heck out of them. They've fallen off my head a hundred times from high heights. They're covered in paint. They're covered in spray foam. They're scratched all the heck, and they just still work so, so well. The battery life's amazing on them. They're really, really comfortable, and they do a great job of protecting my ears. 
when I'm in the shop running saws, dust collection, I wear them when I'm mowing, they just work amazing. So I really like listening to audiobooks and podcasts and music when I would work. And because I make videos all the time, I would constantly have to turn the speaker on and off in between filming. So I just started always just wearing these. And in a lot of videos, you'll see me wearing these as I'm going around, I'll be hand planing. And people are like, why has he got hearing protection on? It's just because I don't wanna to have to turn a speaker on and off. And the sound quality is phenomenal in them. Now there's some debate on whether noise canceling headphones are actually protecting your hearing or not. What they do is they create a sound wave they have a microphone in them that hears whatever sounds coming in and they create a opposite sound wave going out that basically nullifies the sound coming in. That's different than just like the foam inserts that go into your ears that block those sound waves. And there's debate on how well those actually protect your hearing, especially for like long term. According to my research, these over the muff style noise canceling headphones, because they go over your ear, seal your ear, they do a really good job of protecting your ears for long-term and just regular hearing protection. Unlike kind of the ear pod style, these don't do as good of a job. They use noise canceling to block out those sound waves, but because they're not over your ear, protecting your ear, they don't do as good of a job. So I really like these. They're way more comfortable than those ear pods too. They don't fall out, just really like them. I highly, highly recommend these. And I've tried some of the other brands that are kind of in the woodworking world that you see floating around and the sound quality and the volume and the clarity just were nothing compared to these. And the battery life's amazing. I just am super impressed with these things. So if you want a good set of headphones, check these out. All right, number eight on the list is a nice heirloom quality new hand plane. You can see behind me, I'm a big fan of hand planes. I have a whole bunch of vintage Stanleys. But sometimes the woodworker in your life might not want to go through the whole process of restoring those and tuning those and it can be a lot of work. I have a couple of videos on those. It's a lot of fun and very rewarding doing that. But sometimes it's nice to just get a nice, pretty much out of the box, really well tuned hand plane. And probably out of the manufacturers that make good quality new hand planes like Lee Nielsen, Lee Valley, Veritas, and Wood River. My favorite's Lee Nielsen. They just have, to me, the most timeless classic look. You can get this number four smoother in all brass. It's just a really handsome plane. They come out of the box in really good shape. You have to do very minimal tuning to them. You, no matter what tool it is, you're really gonna wanna put a, a good edge on it for it to really work properly. Or they make little smaller block planes. This is, a rabbiting block plane because the blade runs all the way to the edge. I don't really recommend this. I'm not absolutely in love with this plane. What I wish I had instead, and I probably will ask my wife for Christmas for myself, is the smaller bodied all brass block plane from Lee Nielsen. And they have all sorts of really beautiful tools on their website, but a really nice hand plane from Lee Nielsen, Lee Valley, Wood River is a great gift and it's gonna last that woodworker for their entire lives and someday it'll get handed down to hopefully their apprentice or children or whoever. So it's a great gift. All right, number nine is kind of another two-parter here. So first are some of these, these are great little stocking stuffer type gifts. These Veritas Workshop Design Pads. I really like them because they're essentially graphing paper but they have little dots instead of straight lines and I really like to sketch all my designs. I, I don't really know how to use a SketchUp. I've tried a couple of times and I haven't perfected it. And pretty much all my designs I do entirely by sketching. And I like this Veritas sketch pad because those little, those four little dots that make up the squares, it lets me divide my scale. So sometimes I might make each one of those little squares a foot and every dot is three inches. Sometimes I make those squares where each dot is an inch, uh, different things like that. So I, I like it because I don't really know how to use SketchUp very well. And when I'm designing something or sketching it, I like to be able to have the nice fluid ability to sketch it by hand. And then I usually will send that off to somebody who can make nice plans up for me after I build the project. But I just really like a good pad to sketch out. I think it's a really 
good organic way to design furniture. Kind of quickly get your ideas out. And then my all time favorite pencils, these are great little stocking stuffers, are these Pentel pencils. And they come in three different sizes and I have multiples of all different sizes. The black one is a 0.5, the blue one is 0.7, and the yellow is 0.9. So thickest, medium, finest. So a lot of my sketching, I'll use the black and then the workshop, I'll use these two depending on the size of the timber or wood that I'm using. But I just really, really like these pencils are awesome. They take a lot of abuse and it's just, they're, they're great. So those two for designing. And then with that, I think the best way to become a better woodworker is through books. Obviously watching videos is what I want you to do. It's kind of how I make my living. So I want you to watch my videos and such, but people ask me how to improve and how to get better. And the best way is books. But I wanted to share with you some of my favorites from Truth to Tools. This is, there's a bunch of these books, really good woodworking books from Lost Art Press. Just go to his website, Christopher Swartz, who used to be an editor at Fine Woodworking. He kind of created that publishing house for woodworking books and he's brought back a bunch of old titles that are out of print and just a lot of really, really good, good books. So a lot of these are from there. This is from there, it's really cool. It kind of talks about a lot of different measuring ways from antiquity and history and how they kind of used to measure things and how all of our measuring is derived from that. It's really kind of interesting book. Um, Paul Sellers, who's a big uh, inspiration of mine, Essential Woodworking Hand Tools. Just a big book of all sorts of hand tools, how to use them, everything about them. Awesome book for somebody who's getting into hand tools. Michael Pekovich, Foundations of Woodworking. He inspires a lot of my furniture. I really love the oak. First of all, white oak's one of my favorites. You see him use tons of white oak. And the through um, proud mortise and tenon joinery that he uses. He has a lot of really good furniture in there. He's a really good woodworker. This with the grain. As a woodworker, it's really important to understand wood and wood movement and everything about wood. This is a great book, again, from Lost Art Press. Probably one of my all-time favorites is this just book of Japanese joinery. You can just scroll through this thing and learn so many cool Japanese joints to inspire you in projects. It's kind of derived around home building. That's really what most of their joinery is designed for, not as much for furniture, but home building, but it can cross over big time into furniture making. With All Precision Possible, which is a really, really old book by Rubo, who has that famous Rubo workbench. There's a lot of really famous pictures and prints in here on furniture. It's a really great book. And then another awesome one that's probably the most bang for your buck that you'll ever get is this book that is put out by Fine Woodworking called Woodworking Wisdom and Know-How. And I think it's basically a, they just put all their best articles from years and years of magazines into a book and you can see how much is just jammed in there. And one of the things that I like so much about books and magazine articles is the illustrations. You know, talking about woodworking or showing woodworking in video is really cool too. But the illustrations on like, you know, showing wood grain or how joinery goes together or how pieces of a project go together, it's just really enlightening to see some of these illustrations and everything. So that is number nine. All right, so coming in at number 10, the last set of gift ideas would be something like plans or merchandise from your favorite woodworkers out there. A lot of us local small woodworkers, we have merchandise. I just got a new set of hats in, t-shirts, and we usually offer plans. So it doesn't have to be me, but people that you like and support, they make great gifts, they make merchandise that the woodworker in your life would probably appreciate, especially if you know who they're fans of. Go check out their websites, and then you can support that local woodworker and get the person in your woodworking life a gift that they'll really like. And then also gift cards, gift cards to places like Lee Valley, Lee Nielsen, Woodcraft, Rockler, and also look for local small woodworking companies like uh, here in Mid Michigan area, there's a place called Johnson's Workbench. Definitely make sure you're supporting your small local places. And hopefully you have a really good holiday season. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you got some great ideas and take care.